Hello, Stephen. Thank you for joining us for this quick talk. Uh, so there is the One Dot Country project. I understand that's going to launch soon. Um, how did that idea come about? It's really great to give the community updates. We've been working for months about this idea of not just digital identity, but how to bring it back to the Web2 so that all the Web2 infrastructure and now can be built on top of the Web3 tools, blockchain that we have been building for years. The key idea of dot one and dot country has been brewing in the industry to think about how can we connect about not just the identities, what you do in the crypto, in the blockchain. Can I show it to my friends and moms that don't even have tokens? We think the big idea of profiles, the whole idea of engagement that can happen on the web browser with a proper website, with a proper uh, browser domains is going to be the key where many years of innovation of Web3 can bring back to the Web2. And this innovation, has it been done before? I know there's .eth for Ethereum with the ENS, there's Unstoppable, who have the .nft, .crypto, and then even on the top level side, there's .com. Mm -hmm. So can you explain a little bit more of how one .country fits into this one? ENS and for sure Unstoppable, many of the early on um, domain system for even Bitcoin, are our inspiration. They are the pioneers in the space. As a matter of fact, we even fork the ENS code base to think about what is the right register and the extension architecture to use. But we're the first one to bring it back to the top level domains in the Web 2, I would say Web 1 space. If everyone start with the internet, they would know the first thing to know is which website and which domain to type into on the browser. And to do it at the top level domain is huge because uh, both the organization called ICANN really, really set the right standard, what an open web is meant to be. And to do it at the register, to make sure that all the records, as well as even mail server, and the uh, thing that you route, the uh, DNS and all the traffic, is what I really felt Web3 is ready now to serve as an infrastructure. Later on, we we're gonna bring in all the Web1 services, like email, as well as how you handle analytics, for sure, even all the service that tell you what will be the traffic that uh, we can serve will be all possible with the Web3 very soon. And we'd love to be both the pioneers as well as bringing the entire crypto industry into that. And then finally for the community, with say if I'm a validator, right, or if I'm a Web3 enthusiast, if I've used different platforms, or I've used GameFi or DeFi and Harmony before, what should I expect? Mm. What could I on launch? Absolutely. So we want to tell both our community, but also broader industry, that uh, the best way to connect all these uh, wallet addresses, balance, and your history, for sure your reputation of everything you do online, is really through this open record. And the way to tie it together is whether a different profiles that you, 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 you serve and maintain and interact with your fans, and as a validator, it used to be the sticking dashboard, and now people can directly interact with you, with even a, uh, a site that you can maintain, and collectively as a, as a community or a group of people that we can multi-sig to actually serve that page that is not about a huge web page anymore, but a community hub will be really something that uh, our community is ready. Many of our validators as well as partners are signed up for the domains that we serve. I think it's a really great way to not just think about this is my blockchain, this is another chain, this is another product, but have a way to do not just a cross chain, but even I would say cross web. Right? We are crossing over to web two, many of the social um, sites also cross back to web one, which is all the infrastructure of DNS, mail server, as well as uh, routing services. And as one dot country develops, will the community have any input on the direction that it goes? Mm -hmm. If they want new features or they want certain aspects that they can add on? Absolutely. So Harmony will always be the infrastructure to power Web3 and now connecting back to Web1, Web2 for the creators. How can the developers and our community be part of is what we always, always aspire to be, the open development, but also open governance of our product. So uh, first thing that we launched really is something called the H.Country that every one of our validator and Harmony community, for short, can come and showcase 
what they want to say, a voice of the community on the each dark country domain already. So we ask them to be multi-seeking into like controlling both the site and all the balance and re revenue we want to drive as a DAO for them to be controlling what will be the development of it. We want to make sure the revenue can sustain, uh, sustain the development uh, much later on. I do think that both the resources, which is the revenue from the sales, to the actually showcase of the status of the each other country, and then later on making sure the platform is so for our developer to do extension of the widget with a full solid there. And then um, with the Harmony ecosystem itself, I understand there was the crazy dot one and then HNS at one point. How will one dot country be different? How how will that next phase? How do you see that? Yeah. So crazy dot one is something we launched uh, almost two years ago to know that for sure that there are a lot of people really interested in uh, in us building up an identity, showcasing what is the culture of a community. It was a really, really important uh, product, uh, I would say, even for us to learn like, what it means to be uh, having a profile page. And this one is even higher level uh, from Crazy Dog One, is the, the reason why we learned the space and get the top level domains. And ENS and Unstoppable, even many of our partners and the CyberConnect have done very well to know what can be the traction that the millions of sales. We also learned a lot about the radical market, how to have a sustainable uh, market, if not economic games, which we talked about a few months ago that we've done a lot of research into the space, how to really understand that everything about auctions, everything about escrow, everything about payment, can be a very different infrastructure and um, I would say radical market that they are still yet to come, that uh, Crazy Dog is a great experiment. ENS, the, the rental and the pricing model is also what Ethereum, if not Victoria, talk a lot about. That we do think that uh, it's going to be a really, really like great, great, um, great, great, great place to experiment, not just about the digital identity, but what we call the economic games on blockchain. Thank you.